What's going on everybody? Jolt here from the Token Minorities and I am back with something very special for you guys today and throughout the next few weeks. Uh, I'm going to be playing some Little Cup here in the APA, the American Pokemon Association, I think. I might have totally butchered that, but regardless, yeah, we're in the APA now. We took over for uh, Deathly I Am, who had a pretty cool Sun team. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are already kind of familiar with it. Uh, I don't remember the whole team off the top of my head, but you can see six of the mods that I'm bringing here uh, in front of you. Uh, he had the uh, the Venipede, the Yamask, Houndour, Bellsprout, Vulpix, uh, Heliolisk. I know we also had like a, a Ball Toy, a Ralts, a uh, let's see, Ball Toy, Ralts. Trying to think what some of the other mons were off the top of my head. I can't think of them all right now. Um, but even so, it's a pretty cool team. Not inheriting the best record in the world. So, you know, in terms of the chance of, chances of bringing this team to the, the playoffs, they are pretty, uh, pretty slim. Especially considering I know very little about Little Cup. Uh, let me just be real with you guys. This whole like remainder of the season that I'm going to try to play, I'm I can almost guarantee you I'm gonna struggle or I'm gonna like really surprise myself because I know very little about the tier. Uh, pretty much all I know is from watching Sticks play Little Cup and listening to him talk at me about Little Cup. Uh, as uh, otherwise, I just have no experience with it. So uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a big learning experience for me. But um, you know, I, I'm not expecting too much if I'm being totally honest with you guys. So uh, with that, I'll the way let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, matchup we have against gypsy this is i believe considered week seven uh i, I believe they've already uploaded week seven a, a while ago at this point so apologies that this is late uh this just kind of got thrown at me here in the middle of the week and this is the soon as i could get it up so uh yeah so here we are Gypsy, very good battler. He's probably top one in the format, uh, period, just in draft format. So if you're not familiar with Gypsy King, make sure to go check him out, especially if you really enjoy to watch the top level of draft league play. He's going to be linked down in the description below. An absolutely phenomenal battler. Uh, phenomenal battler, phenomenal prepper, just everything that a draft format player needs to have in his skill set. Gypsy has it and is one of probably the best at each of those categories if I'm being honest I think he's that good so make sure to go check him out and uh, obviously we're in for a tough one here he's currently undefeated in the league at at the time of the battle and uh, we'll just see how it goes all right so he is packing the Smoochum the Litleo the Meowth Bronzor, Volibee, and Spritzy. I'm probably going to start calling some of these names accidentally by their fully evolved uh, forms, which I know he does that too, so I don't feel too bad about doing that, but uh, you know, I guess I guess I'm sorry if that happens, but uh, yeah, I already mentioned what I'm bringing. You can see it in front of you. Basically, the idea behind the, uh, the team that I'm bringing here is to try to spike stack him with the Venipede and then try to break him down with my dual fires. Uh, as you can see, he doesn't really have great fire resist on his team. He had two water Water types that he opted not to bring. He had a Corphish and a Wooper, uh, both of which my Helioptile or my Helio Helioptile was uh, meant to directly counter. Uh, it's actually an Air Balloon Helioptile, so I would have been able to counter most Wooper sets in, in addition to uh, being able to chew any hit from the Corphish as I am actually running Dry Skin despite the fact that I have the, uh, the Drought on this team. Um, even so, that was the idea behind the, the Helioptile set, but uh, no matter because the idea is to be able to wear him down with my dual fires and to try to clean up the game with one of those two Pokemon. Uh, maybe even cleaning up the game with the Helioptile just depending on what he preserves for the late game. The Helioptile could be a win con for me as well. Bellsprout obviously is uh, is pretty good for that purpose as well. It's a focus sashed Bellsprout this week. And let me explain the reasoning behind that a little bit, as I know that's kind of weird, especially when my team doesn't have hazard removal. But if you look at Gypsy's team here, he only has one rocker on his team, that's the Bronzor. If you look across my entire roster, the only Pokemon that Bronzor is able to set up Stealth Rock against for free 
on my entire team is my Venipede. Venipede's not going to be around very long in this game. Venipede's getting up spikes as early as possible in this game, and then it's going to go down. So there's no way that Bronzor, that I'm going to even allow that Bronzor to get up Stealth Rock at any point in the game, unless I am able to also pressure him with my Venipede spikes. I will take losing my Focus Sash on Bellsprout in exchange for having three layers of spikes up on my Venipede. If he goes into Bronzor on my Venipede, I'm getting up three layers immediately. So um, that's the idea behind Focus Sash Bellsprout. I think he's going to be forced to either defog away those spikes and his own rocks in the process or he is uh, going to leave all the hazards up and I'll lose my sash and I'll take that trade any day of the week. So um, yeah, just something that I think might be able to catch him off guard. I think he's most likely going to defog so that'll give me a sasher in the back that'll help me check something like his spreadsheet. But the biggest threat over here that I'm going to have to try to worry about or try to deal with is the Meowth. Uh, I just don't have anything for Meowth on my draft. Uh, the, literally the best mon I had on my entire team for Meowth is Yamask, and Yamask doesn't really counter Meowth either. Uh, Meowth has access to both Bite and Knockoff. Bite would be boosted by Technician and Knockoff. Uh, once he knocks off a potential Violet, which is what I'm running, uh, it doesn't really lose any power since I lose my Violet, and then he basically just net has the same power from the Knockoff uh, on the second time. So Meowth... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Yamask is my check, but it's my only check. Okay, combination fake out and faint just body bagged my entire team. Uh, all the mons I had in the back, they were dealt with even easier by Meowth. So uh, basically, what I have to do is weaken down the Meowth, get it into range of my Yamask late for the uh, for the late game, and then maybe I'll have a chance against it. But that's that's the mon that I have my eye on here immediately at team preview. I basically have to really uh, hope that Gypsy is going to allow me to wear it down in the early game, but. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right on into uh, right on into this game. I'm going to lead off with my Venipede as Gypsy is going to challenge me, and he's going to lead off with his Smoochum, which was kind of what I expected to be his lead uh, at this point in the game. I thought that Smoochum was probably best served as a Focus Sash lead, and that's exactly what he decides to do here. He does reveal the Forewarm, which makes sense. Uh, he's going to see that I have Double Edge on this set. Double Edge was basically just there to allow me to uh, knock myself out and prevent a defog once I get up my hazards. Just in case he tries to go Volby on a 1 HP uh, Venipede, this means that I'll be able to do damage to him and knock him out or knock myself out uh, as opposed to going for an Endeavor or something. I think it just made more sense to kill myself and prevent him from getting rid of my hazards in the first place. So here, going to protect on his fake out. Then I'm going to go for the spikes as he goes straight into his Bronzor. So this is kind of the situation that I have envisioned uh, for, for this game. I'm going to go ahead and try to get up all my layers of spikes. If he wants to get those layers off of the field, sure, he can get up his stealth rock up here. But if he wants to ever get my layers off the field, he has to defog. And that basically means that my Sash Bell Sprout is going to be a little bit more of a threat later on in the game. So I am just going to go for all of my layers here. As Gypsy does get up his stealth rock, which is his best play, uh, as now he's going to go for an earthquake. Uh, I guess he was probably fearing the endeavor on this set, so he didn't want to go straight for a. Uh, Gyro Ball or a Psychic that would have been able to do a lot more damage to me at this stage. So good play on his end. I'm actually not packing the Endeavor on my uh, on my Venipede. I'm packing, if I remember correctly, I believe I am packing the uh, Double Edge, Protect, Spikes, and uh, what was my last move? Anyway, it didn't come into play, so I don't recall what the move was off the top of my head. Um, but even so, he's just going to go for another Earthquake uh, to, I guess, wear me down a little bit further. I guess he wasn't entirely sure if he would be able to knock me out with a Psychic or a Gyro Ball. But uh, as I am just going to go for another Double Edge here on this turn... Oh, my last move was Toxic, I remember now, uh, to help me out against the Volibee if he tried to come in and uh, defog on me. That would be one way to ensure I can keep up at least one spike throughout the game. So uh, he's just going to take me out here with a Psychic, which is fine. I have my full layers up uh, right away in this game, which is pretty much fantastic. I'm just going to go straight into... <laughs> that was not intentional, by the way. Uh, <laughs> this thing's nickname being fantastic. But uh, yeah, I just decided to use the, the nicknames that were used by uh, Deathly whenever he had the team. So uh, anyways, I'm just going to fire off the Z-move just to make sure I get a kill here with the full hazards up. I kind of hoped he would try to go into Volby to try to chew a hit, but Gypsy's obviously a better player than that. He's just going to sack off his Bronzor. But honestly, that's great for me because now his Stealth Rocker is gone and now he's in that bind that I wanted to set up here for this game. He either has to defog away his rocks and my spikes or all those hazards stay on the field and I'll be able to wear down the Meowth more easily for my Mons later on in the game. So here he's going to make the play into his Volibee 
And uh, this basically tells me he's either Choice Scarf Volby, which I thought was the most likely set if he were not going to be just like a really fat defogger. Uh, and he does just go straight for the defog. So this tells me he's probably in a Violite set uh, instead of Choice Scarf. I don't expect him to go for defog if he was a Choice Scarfer in this uh, in this situation. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight for the Fire Blast as he burns a turn going for defog. This is fine by me because now this thing looks like it's into a KO range uh, from my Fire Blast. And uh, he's actually going to choose to preserve his Volibee, which is a fair play as he goes into his Litleo. Uh, and as you'll see here in just a second, it's going to be able to uh, chew up this hit pretty well. Now, I'm expecting the Litleo to probably have Hyper Voice in this matchup. I believe Litleo gets Hyper Voice. And if that's the case, I want to go straight into my Hound Hour. This is a Berry Juice Hound Hour. And I'll be able to chew any one hit from this and be able to get myself back up to full health and also be able to block the potential Flame Charge, which I knew was a pretty likely set for Gypsy to try try to bring here in this matchup just because the speed on the Litleo is, uh, is really important here. So I'm going to just go for a Sludge Bomb here, thinking it would actually do a little bit more damage than it actually did. Also half expecting him to maybe try to go back into his Volibee to sack it off. I didn't want to miss a Fire Blast. I could have gone for maybe two uh, Sludge Bombs and taken him out. I uh, probably should have just gone straight for a Fire Blast because as you can see here, as I go for the second one, going to miss out on the KO. And if I went for two Fire Blasts, I would have been able to knock it out there. So uh, that is my mistake, unfortunately he was able to get off a little more chip damage with his return as now I'm just going to take him out with a sludge bomb. That was a speed tie there. I believe we both hit uh, one or 16 total speed I think and I uh, managed to win that speed tie so that's pretty cool. As now he's going to go into his spritzy. I'm expecting this to be a trick room variant. I guess my team it makes the most sense uh, by far since he really needs speed control against my uh, incredibly offensive team that I have here as I'm going to be able to land a crit and a poison with the sludge bomb uh, the crit mattered in the sense that it brought him just below full health what matters more though I think is the poison as now I'm going to be able to just kind of passively wear down the spritzy over time and um, I don't know if it's really the biggest deal in the world, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Um, but we'll, we'll just see how it comes into play. I'm just going to burn turn of trick room by going for a protect with my hound hour. Would have always been my play in this situation, uh, regardless of if he got crit, or crit or poisoned in that sense. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to try to go for another protect because I have no reason not to. I'm not going to switch anything into this Pokemon because Spritzy hits pretty darn hard, surprisingly. And I'm going to lose my Hound Hour here. But uh, now what I'm going to do is just go straight into my Bell Sprout as I have the Focus Sash. And this is where I say, I don't know if it really mattered necessarily that the Spritzy got crit or poisoned because it was going to be in range of my Bell Sprout anyways, I believe. And if it wasn't in range of Bell Sprout, it was going to definitely be in range of whatever after the fact as the Trick Room is about to expire. So um, that's just my opinion on it. But even so, I'm going to be able to knock out the, the Spritzy here with the Sludge Bomb. And uh, now he's going to go into his Meowth to uh, basically claim his kill because this is a massive threat against my team and uh, it's still at full health which is not looking good here for the late game as I'm going to go straight into my uh, straight into my Yamas expecting him to go for either the fake out or the faint uh, either way this was my best play as now the trick room will wear off and uh, so now he's going to switch out his Meowth. I know he's going to make that play, so I'm just going to go straight for the knockoff uh, to get rid of this thing's Violite, and now expecting him to either go for a knockoff of his own or to go for a Roost. I'm going to pull the switch into my Heliotile uh, to immediately threaten this. And this is a case where, uh, you know, I kind of wish I had a Life Orb on this. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I had Air, Bloom, Air Balloon was to help me deal with his waters a little better. Obviously, he opted not to bring them, but you know, this is a situation where that kind of bites me in the butt a little bit. Is I'm actually not going to be able to knock this Volibee out in one hit here uh, with with a Thunderbolt. As a, it takes it pretty well. So Volibee and Little Cup, it's it's a monster. It just chews hits. Uh, but I do get a full paralysis here, which is pretty cool. And uh, here I'm going to make a play that might seem a little questionable, but basically what I was predicting here was that the Volibee would try to go for a Roost just in case uh, I do allow it to survive. Uh, Volibee I, th I thought could have been nice to be able to take a hit from my uh, Mask later on in the game if I was able to wear down the Meowth. I thought Gypsy would try to preserve it. Unfortunately, he just goes straight for the knockoff. Uh, what I wanted to do was get my Volpix in for free against this Volibee, go for the Flame Charge, and... Um, 
you know, just put myself in a better position that way. And if he did just go for the roost, I could have just gone for maybe a fire blast and knocked this thing out and still had, uh, you know, a lot of mons to work with here against against this team. But, um, you know, this this is obviously, or th this has been kind of commentated after Gypsy already uploaded his game. So I want to just kind of address uh, the, the comment that he made in his uh, in his upload as well. He mentioned that he thought that might not have been the, the best play to uh, maybe I should have kept full picks at full health and sacked off something else in the process. And I think that probably was like overall a, a smarter play in this situation. Situation is as you can see by by making that play, I kind of got burned here. I'm not going to be able to uh, get rid of this meow because it's just able to sweep through the rest of my team. But uh, you know, just in, in the moment, I felt like it, it was in my best interest to try to win with Vulpix right then and there. I, I really thought he'd go for Roost. I thought that was his best play, and uh, he just didn't make that play. So you know, it is it is what it is. That didn't really work out for me in this case. And as you can see, my mask that's like a, a counter to to this meow doesn't even count. Or Meowth, so I don't know. Like Meowth, Meowth just kind of wrecked me no matter what it did. I feel uh, it would have been like a 50 50 of sorts between uh, Protect and Faint and Fake Out and all that stuff with the Meowth if I had my uh, Vulpix at a higher amount of health. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, we're just gonna get, get, go ahead and get uh, cleaned up here by, by the Meowth. So uh, it is what it is. We're going to take an L here to start off the APA, but. Uh, you know, I still had fun with this matchup. Little Cup is definitely something that is out of my comfort zone right now. And, uh, you know, nowhere to go but up, I guess, from this point. But, uh, you know, it was still fun. Congrats to Gypsy. Good game, of course. And make sure to go check him out once again. See his side of the battle if you haven't already. And just to check out his season. He's been killing it so far in the APA uh, this season. So make sure to go check that out. Now, my next game is going to be against, I think, Envy. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll just see how that goes. I, I'm not even sure what day that's going to get uploaded yet. Hopefully pretty soon. I'm trying to get on schedule here, I promise. But, you know, my top priority right now is still going to be the, the Surge tournament that I hope you guys are paying attention to as well. If you're new to the channel, maybe you're watching me for the first time and have no idea what I'm talking about, go check out our, uh, our videos on Surge format. It's a very cool format. I'm enjoying it a lot and uh, about to upload a semifinals match here pretty soon for that. So uh, make sure to go to go check that out as well. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.